a most satisfying conclusion to the day. An orderly receipt of taxes for 1806, accomplished for the parishes of、um, uh, Thingo, Blackbourne, and Thedwastra, and the property taxes for Cosford, most pleasingly balanced to the farthing. This calls for a good dinner with my son Orbel and my family, after several days' hard work in this office. It is most convenient having my banking office attached to my house here in Guildhall Street. I am most pleased with the work of architect John Soane, or I should now say, Sir John Soane. Little did I know nearly twenty years ago, when I established the Berry New Bank and engaged his services to design these banking offices here in Guildhall Street. That he would go on to design the Bank of England, indeed, most appropriate, do you not think? And especially so, as I find myself the most senior banker in the town. Indeed, for several years after the banking crisis of 1797, I was the sole banker here. It proved beneficial for business, but caused great consternation to myself. And many traders who lost their assets when two Berry banks closed, including Spink and Cars, no less. But that danger is largely passed mercifully. It is the Guildhall building which has been of concern to me recently. My garden across the street adjoins the ancient building, and we have undertaken. By we, I mean the Fefes, of whom I am ashamed to say there are now but two of us since Simmons died, reduced from thirty-six, despite my best efforts to elect more. I have been very much at odds with Godbold more than five years over the embarrassing matter, and fear it must come to court. But I digress into troubling Fefment affairs. What was I speaking of? Ah, yes. The Fefes have undertaken the rebuilding of the council chamber and refurbishment of the courtroom and kitchen in this last year. Do make a visit to the banqueting hall, and admire the plaster ceiling and magnificent sash windows. So much more light than was afforded by the medieval casements. It was much needed, and is now fitted out in the most pleasing way for the purposes of the borough corporation. And petty session courts, and I'm pleased to say for the annual aldermen's dinners. The first one since the refurbishment was held at the beginning of October this year. As near as maybe one hundred and fifty sat down to dinner, and a most exceedingly handsome dinner it was, provided by Mr. Boldero of the Angel Hotel. And now that the Guildhall kitchen is newly fitted up. And with a small door into the hall from the kitchen passage, through which to pass the first course, nothing could be more convenient. I would say that the chandeliers were a little lacking, despite the wax candles. Only one was provided, and it proved insufficient. I believe at least three should be fitted next year, and there should certainly be more regulation of the seating plans. Many tradesmen took the places of the first gentleman at the top table, which was not proper, in my opinion. The election of the borough MPs' dinner this year presented the same unbecoming confusion, as I recall. So we decided that there should be no ball at the assembly rooms, which displeased many. But unless the candidates will bring their ladies, it is never well attended by gentility. And the whole evening is one of unseemly confusion. A very great deal of money is often lavished at the election ball, not less than two hundred and fifty pounds, without answering any good purpose. So this year we made a gift to the poor of one hundred and twenty pounds instead. The number of the poor who were so gifted amounted to four thousand four hundred and forty-two, no less. From the two parishes of St Mary and St James, which is no inconsiderable proportion of the town, these times of war, poor harvests, and economic hardship do indeed take their toll. How different from the election ball in the last year in which I was alderman, 
1802. Such a ball as was never seen, most uncommonly attended by the very first of the county. Three Lady Fitzroys, Lady Harvey and Lady Templeton, all most genteel, although the amount of wine drunk was extraordinary, much of it supplied by myself. Well, much as I could linger to discuss all the affairs of the borough, the fefis, the school governors, and indeed my own bank and business, my dear wife Elizabeth will be awaiting my arrival. And my son Orbel and his children are dining with us at four o'clock. We shall have cards and a little dancing for the young ones, no doubt. I must bid you good day. But do consider the banqueting hall chandeliers when you are visiting and send me word as to whether you consider they provide sufficient light. <laughs>